Hi, welcome to the award-winning Ed Brown Show. And once again, outstanding guest. We have J.J. Michaels here. Her name is, hey, her name is June Joan, but <laughs> she's an author, and a neurologist, you know. And what we're going to do is she's going to tell you how to write books. A lot of people think, hey, what about writing books? Well, welcome, June, JJ. <laughs> uh, you prefer JJ, so that's what we're going to use on the show there. Well, uh, tell us, how did you get involved in writing? And, and then go tell us how an uh, individual that's interested in writing, how do they start? Well, gee, thanks, Mr. Ed, and it's nice being here with you this afternoon. I started writing when I was nine years old. Nine. Yes, I did. I sent my first story off. They weren't off. love letters, were they? <laughs> no, they were. <laughs> <laughs> I sent my first story off to a publisher in New York City mm. and received a nice rejection letter, but mm. they had a little nice clause in there saying, keep writing. Mm. And I wanted to do that, but you know how life starts. You go to college, you get married, you have children, you work on your good government job, mm. but you always had that <laughs> dream, at least I did. I always right. wanted to be a writer. Right. So I started to write, and it took me about five to eight years to write a book because of taking care of my family. Mm -hmm. And in 1991, I found this publisher called Writer's Press, and this new type of publishing had just started. It was called PLD, Publishing on Demand. Mm -hmm. Now that meant they would publish a book, and it would only be in a bookstore let someone come in and ask for it. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't have a problem with that. I was just so excited about it. And so my first book, Path to Truth, A Spiritual Guide to a Higher Consciousness, was published by WordPress. Writer's Press, I should say. Mm -hmm. And then it was taken over by Barnes & Noble. Mm -hmm. And they began to actually put our books on shelves for a very short period of time. But by that time, I was writing my second book, which was called Life is Never as It Seems. And I decided I wanted a publisher. I wanted to go the traditional route. So what I did, I started sending out those query letters, trying to get an agent. <laughs> but it's always nice to have a friend, <laughs> a friend who knows a publisher and work with a publisher. Right, right. And so I did have a traditional publisher called Genesis Press. And they worked um, with Kensington Press. And so they published my first two books, Life is Never as It Seems. This was after you graduated from Howard University. Oh, huh? yeah. This was huh? many years later. <laughs> <laughs> I had retired. <laughs> so um, once I um, started publishing those, they published those books for me. Everything changed for me in a sense about writing. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot. I met some fantastic people that helped me along the way, and I met some that didn't <laughs> help me along the way. You know how they, that goes. Yeah, they mixed up in there. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing about it was, as I began to move through the publishing industry, I noticed that a revolution has started. Where um, instead of having the gatekeepers, as we call them, the traditional publishers that decide you must have a literary agent, you must do this, you must do that, mm -hmm. or you don't get in. Mm -hmm. You got to know somebody. You got to know somebody, <laughs> but you got to know that literary agent who will actually go there. And sometimes it takes two to three years for someone to accept your book. Mm -hmm. And then once it's accepted the traditional way, they can change titles, they can decide on the covers, they can make you rewrite the content. And sometimes it's very rewarding because your name is in lights mm -hmm. and everybody wants to see their book on a bookshelf in a traditional mm -hmm. bookstore. Mm -hmm. I have to take a little sidebar here about when I first saw my book mm -hmm. in um, Borders, mm -hmm. Old Borders. Yeah, yeah, old yeah, borders, they, yeah right. they're gone now. Right. But um, I kept waiting and I kept going to the bookstore in Silver Spring, Borders, mm -hmm. looking for my book. <laughs> Never could see it. Never see you. <laughs> no. <book. laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, it's a traditional published book. They said it was going to be in a bookstore. So one day I'm in there and I'm just looking around. So I said, okay, I'm going to ask the, you know, mm -hmm. sales representative. 
And I went over and I went to answer, and there was my book sitting right there right in front there. of me oh, oh, oh. On, the on, on the shelf. On the counter. Oh, right. On the counter. <laughs> right. Yes, which yeah. is a big place right. in the publishing sure. industry. Right. I took a picture. I started screaming. I was <laughs> so excited. Uh, it's such a wonderful feeling mm -hmm. to actually see your book in a bookstore, mm -hmm. especially after you had, you know, this was your dream. Right. Exactly. And so I, you know, I had been doing. So how long? How how when was, long that? was it? That was in about 205. 205. Yeah, right. 205. Mm -hmm. And I got a call that same day, same hour, my daughter called me. And she was out here at Boyd Town Center. Mm -hmm. And guess what? My book was in the bookstore there. Right, right. <laughs> so. So you um, got a double whammy there, huh? Yes, I sure <laughs> did. And I was so grateful, mm -hmm. so thankful to God and mm -hmm. everyone who has helped me along the way. Mm -hmm. And I've always said that I always want to help others along how, the way. How, how do you do that if a, a person wants to uh, write a book? Well, what's the procedure beside those things that knowing somebody has something like that? How do you prepare yourself academically? Well, you write. Mm -hmm. You can take classes. Mm -hmm. Some people are gifted writers, mm -hmm. but there are plenty of places that you can actually go take writing classes. You have to know your subject matter, whether you're going to do a fiction book mm -hmm. or you're going to do a nonfiction, you're going to do a memoir. There are so many different categories or genres people can write in. So know where you're going. Be mm -hmm. focused on what you do. Do your homework. Mm -hmm. That's key. That's the key. Do your homework. Do That's your homework. Don't worry about rushing at that point. Mm -hmm. The main thing, if you love what you're doing and you have a passion, then that will see you through. In the meantime, like I said, do your homework. Do your research. That's the key, too. E even for research. fiction books, you got to do your research. Mm -hmm. You can't talk about Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. and not know and make, you know, you can show mm -hmm. it. We have literary license to mm -hmm. create and do things. Mm -hmm. But most people, if they're reading about a book like this one, um, my book, Secret Unravel, takes place in D.C. Mm -hmm. Both of them really end, but I mentioned oh, now. Both, both of them took place mm -hmm. in D.C.? What, yeah. what is that, the name of one? Unravel? Secrets Unravel takes place in D.C. And mm -hmm. Five Days of Darkness also takes place, part of it, in D.C. Mm -hmm. And I talk about how at university, my alma mater. Oh, good. And so, but I know Founders Library. Right. I noticed I wouldn't make up a name <laughs> for it. That's really what you're just relating some of your experiences it's that yes. you had on the you, campus. And there. a lot of times people will say, is this about you? Are you writing about your experiences? Yeah, you tend to mm. write about experiences. Mm. You even may use someone's personality, mm. but you don't come out and I said, mm. and I'll say, Mr. Ed, mm. I have you in my next book. <laughs> yeah. But it may be something that I will say, well, this character went to tape a TV show, or she was live on TV, and she met this fantastic gentleman, Mr., mm -hmm. you know, Smith. You know, it's like that type of thing. And I could use, maybe describe you in a sense, mm -hmm. but not mm -hmm. to it, you know, to yeah. you. Or maybe well, you're well, a well, actually, if woman. Well, actually, if that associated with Howard, what, what about, did you talk about the old U Street? A lot of the oh, people yes. now don't know, you know, when you say U Street, they, they forget mm -hmm. about what it, how it started. This book, you will love, Mr. Ed. Mm -hmm. It talks about U Street, mm -hmm. Capital View. It gives a history of those areas. Mm -hmm. It talk about, you know, the Mount Pleasant area. Mm -hmm. And so I did my research. And, and then I had friends who lived here during those periods right. of times. And that's the best research in the best world. Best research. <laughs> I mean, you have to check some facts because right. people right. get a little confused or, mm -hmm. you know, mixed up. Mm -hmm. But when you have someone who has actually experienced mm -hmm. or lived in the area, mm -hmm. it can really help. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying. Do your homework. That's, that's that, very that's, important. That, that's the main thing. Right. But uh, actually getting involved, what, what do you think about uh, majoring in uh, English? Uh, uh, what major do you think a, a person should have that would help them? Communications. Communication. English. Mm -hmm and whatever they want to do. Because mm -hmm. sometimes writing has nothing to do with majoring in English, literature, mm -hmm. um, you know, those communication. Mm -hmm. right. Some people the just have a story. The subject matter is the thing. Yeah. They have a story in their heart. Right. And I find that most people actually have a story that they want to share. Right. <laughs> and they just don't know how to get it out mm -hmm. on paper because mm -hmm. our lives are stories. Mm -hmm. sure. Or maybe they have a story about something else they want to share. But once you start writing, you have to be dedicated, committed, 
You have to be, you have to persevere. You have to stick with it. Hey. I would be up at four o'clock in the morning. Okay, but uh, I, I want to make sure that we get to this subject matter mm. of helping others, volunteers. That's what this show is about. Tell us about your personal situation with that. Well, what I do, as far as keeping it in context with writing, I help others to get their books published. Mm -hmm. I will actually do a personal one-on-one -on -one with someone mm -hmm. a couple of times mm -hmm. to get them started mm -hmm. and actually see them through to the mm -hmm. finished product mm -hmm. because that's so very important. And I don't charge mm -hmm. for this. Yes. This is my way mm -hmm. of giving back. Mm -hmm. I will okay. tell them about what publishers are available. Mm -hmm. I will take them on an internet. You give them uh, Background. I but, give them the background. But let's get to this volunteer. You, mm -hmm. you personally were involved in your family with this uh, a problem. Yeah, well, what happened in mentioning giving back as a sideline, but it's also connected mm -hmm. to my books, 10% mm -hmm. of my proceeds mm -hmm. from my book sales mm -hmm. go to the Hydrocephalus mm -hmm. Association mm -hmm. and NF Okay, well, tell us about that association. Well, the reason I chose those associations because my son, Antoine Aparicio was born with both of those debilitating diseases. He had NF, which mm -hmm. is like the elephant man, the tumors mm -hmm. all over the body, mm -hmm. although his was not shown. Mm -hmm. He also had um, hydrocephalus, which is the fluid on the brain. Mm -hmm. And you feel, see a lot of people who are in accidents, because mm -hmm. you can get hydrocephalus. Mm -hmm. It's something that can happen to anyone. Mm -hmm. And he had to have a shunt put in. Mm -hmm. And so that deformed his head. He had over almost 40 surgeries. Is that? And he's 40 in, surgeries? Yeah, he's yeah. in medical books mm -hmm. from the University. University of Virginia mm -hmm. because his surgery lasted 12 hours. Is that right? Yes, it was the first time mm -hmm. that it ever happened. And anyone interested in work, working in that society or that group? They can just contact the Hydrocephalus Association. Mm -hmm. um, and what I do is make sure, even though my son is deceased now, mm -hmm. they gave him three months at birth. He lived until he was 16. Mm -hmm. God had another plan for no him. No kidding. And so I still contribute to, to that and, organization. And, and that organization, you have an a email or something for it? Yeah, you can. Well, I don't have mm -hmm. the email right on me, but you can go to mm -hmm. www.hydro.org, mm -hmm. or you can look it up on Google. Mm -hmm. that, and we mm -hmm. and we need now. This is very positive. Mm -hmm. We need volunteers for right. uh, programs like mm -hmm. that, and this is an appeal that you're making from a personal note. Right. You know that uh, anyone interested in working uh, with this organization, mm -hmm. just give you a call. Right. Because it's well worth it. You know, uh, you, you had years of working in the organization, and they need volunteers. Well, I've had years in contributing to them. Yeah. Not physical works. I just yeah. want to make that clear, yeah. you know, keep everything well, straight. I do the is, yeah. um, monetary contributions yes. through my books right. to them. Good. And, but they That's can good. actually go to my website, mm -hmm. www.jjmichael dot com c o m mm -hmm. and it's a contact there mm -hmm. and they can contact me about mm -hmm. the organizations and another one I like to mention mm -hmm. is the ALS mm -hmm. I just mentioned to you mm -hmm. that I had a good friend who just mm -hmm. made her transition Deanie Tiggle and they're mm -hmm. going to be doing the walk for ASL okay. and so, yeah and you can contribute to that one and if mm -hmm. you're an author you can contribute it and the name of your books would be great mm -hmm. and so I challenge all authors to mm -hmm. go and contribute Tri to an organization mm -hmm. that would be good to mm -hmm. give back through your give books. Back. That's give what, back. That's what we're mm -hmm. about in uh, mm -hmm. Ed Brown show. I'm mm -hmm. going to wrap this up. But I, I, I mean, that's fantastic, J.J. <laughs> <laughs> J.J. has two books here that's in, involved with uh, uh, the area. You know, a lot of us, you know, we uh, hear about things that happened back those days. And here we have someone that experienced it. She's working with this uh, uh, different uh, organizations there, volunteers. And those organizations, they need your help. This has been Ed Round. See you in a second. We've got a councilman coming up.
Hey, welcome back to the award-winning Ed Brown Show. And we have an outstanding young man. I mean, he's given up 10 years to actually be on the county council and make Prince George County what he's got. I really admire this young man. This is a uh, uh, Spanish American Heritage Month. And uh, I said, I have to honor uh, Mr. Campos here. Will Campos, and another thing, he hasn't had enough. He's going to run for the House of Delegates. So, I mean, this is a good example for young people out there. He, young man is given 10 years, and he's got two, got, uh, what is it, 10 years, and then, then the House of Delegates is four years, and then guess what? Uh, he, he, don't, he didn't know I was going to tell you. He's going to jump the room soon. So. <laughs> A lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> a lot going on. Welcome to the Ed Brown Show. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's been a while since I was uh, here last time. So right. it's, uh, you have not aged one, <laughs> one month one since last time I saw you. Oh, you. And, and, and it's run been that years. again. <laughs> it's been years since the last time I was here. Right. And you look exactly the same. Right. My goodness. The, the Brown family definitely has good genes in them. Yeah, it must be. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway... Um, Will, uh, I, I've uh, seen you uh, working up there and, and, you know, and getting things done. And I, I think you've done, we really want to commend you for the job that you've done for Prince George County. You're a great example for the young people. You, like I said earlier, you've served 10 years now, and you're going to do more. And uh, if we had more young people like you, I think Brent Georgia would be really up further than they are now because you have a commitment and you've shown your commitment by working. You know, a lot of people do a lot of talking, but hey, uh, uh, like I said, Ed Brown's show, we like to really honor you for the job that you've done, and we know you're going to do a beautiful job uh, at the House of Delegates. Well, okay. thank you so much. That really means a lot to me. It's uh, very humbling, to be honest with you. It has been 10 years. I can't believe it actually has yeah. flown by that quickly. And you've been there since the very beginning, so mm -hmm. I appreciate all the... Uh, uh, the the kind words because mm. uh, you've seen uh, yeah. my growth on the council right. and so uh, it, it is a um, uh, it's been a great run uh, I'm very happy with some of the things that we've been able to, to achieve especially not just for Prince George's County but also for my district mm. uh, schools public infrastructure um, a new firehouse a new elementary school uh, a new library coming uh, all in within the the same immediate neighborhood as well mm -hmm. uh, to alleviate and bring amenities to areas that we haven't seen in a long time. Economic development, especially on Route 1. We have a Whole Foods coming. We uh, got Bus Boys and Poets, which is a very, very popular restaurant in the DC metro region mm -hmm. that came to revitalize um, uh, the Route 1 corridor in the Hyattsville region. So I'm very happy with some of the things that we've been able to achieve. Part of it has been hard work. Part of it has been luck. To be honest with you, yeah. <laughs> but I'll take it. <laughs> right. Well, well the compromise. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's what you have to say. Not luck. It's compromise. No, you know? absolutely. You, you yeah. help me, and I help you. You know, <laughs> I learned that on the planning board early. No, know? absolutely, absolutely. You know, yeah. is, is that's what you. In order to get things done for your area, this you have to compromise, and a lot of people don't understand it. You know, is that you're working for the total county. And that you have to help each other. Right, exactly. You know, you can't, uh, and, and like I say, you've done a terrific job. You talk about Whole Foods and uh, uh, Route 1 there. I'm uh, familiar with that. I, my office used to be right there on uh, uh, Riverdale Road, right, right around the corner. Right, exactly. And, yeah. you know, it, the, the fact is that uh, Whole Foods, it could have been any other major uh, mm -hmm. entity as far as uh, retail is concerned. Uh, it, we needed something on the Route 1 corridor to open the eyes of other investors to say, okay, we are open for business. Uh, it is time to come. And we, we've been overlooked for so long yes. uh, in the DC metro region. And guess what? Now everybody's out of land. We have the land uh, and now investors are coming. We have to do it right, obviously. We can't just let anybody go and, right. and dig in and mm. construct whatever it is that they want. Mm. Uh, we have to listen to the communities. But I think in this case with the Whole Foods, for example, and the things that we're working on Route 1, mm. uh, the development is going really well. Uh, and um, it's bringing a I lot of... I was really elated when I saw that a project. 
Yeah, because what I did, I, I I drove down Riverdale Road, went up Route One, and, and drove back to the and, and looked at that site. You know what I mean? That's a exactly. huge site. And you know? uh, it really is. It was prime for development. It, it's it's sad to see the trees go. I mm. definitely uh, yeah. appreciate the environmental component to it, uh, but at the same time, we're bringing uh, amenities to the area that we have never had before uh, mm. in this in this region. Mm. And the Route One corridor uh, is definitely has been. Uh, sitting vacant for too long. Uh, it's time to um, bring smart growth to it, and I think that's what we've done. And so I'm, I'm very proud of those things that we've been able to do uh, from our end. And yes, as you stated, I'm now running for a state delegate for District 47B. Uh, God willing, come November, um, with the election, everything will go well, and mm -hmm. we'll hopefully start uh, in January. Yeah, well, well, you, you know, uh, sometimes people be in the office, you know, they have nothing to show for it. But uh, the time that, and, and I watch your progress, and I, and I tell my son, I said, <laughs> Campos is, is on the ball. And I, I pride myself in the fact that I had you on early. Yeah, you, you, you had know, me from you the first, very, very well, beginning. Yeah, when you, when you first started. See? I think I'm, I weighed like 15 pounds. I was 15 pounds lighter when you had me. Right, that. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. But uh, the idea is that you've done uh, so much. And t tell us some of the projects that you're going to work on once you become a, a, a delegate. Well, the fact of the matter is, uh, one of the things that I'm very proud of for our district is having been able to work with our local and state officials to justify and bring to fruition a brand new elementary school mm -hmm. to alleviate the overcrowding in our area. Great. Unfortunately, the part of our county, which is District 2 over in the Hyattsville region, the city of Hyattsville, uh, is the most overcrowded when it comes to elementary school kids. So we were able to bring a school, it took about six to eight years, if you can believe yeah. that, to finally com right. be complete where it opened up this year. Uh, but the, the, the unfortunate part is, uh, that's great, but the unfortunate part is that we are still overcrowded mm -hmm. uh, in that region. So we actually need more money and we need at least one more school. Mm -hmm. So one of the major projects is basically, once again, start all over again. Mm -hmm. Justify funding for that area get the money from the local as well as the state uh, and literally find a space and mm -hmm. build another school because uh, we cannot, we need uh, a proper facility, we need proper uh, uh, schooling for our kids mm -hmm. in Prince George's County in general, right. but if they are over, if the classes are overcrowded in a certain region, then they're mm -hmm. not, we're not doing a, a good job right. in educating them. Right. And so we need to make sure that uh, more money comes into the district mm -hmm. in that area so that it alleviates the overcrowding in general, mm -hmm. but obviously the school system overall benefits. Mm -hmm. So that would be uh, a major. One, one of your projects. Absolutely. Oh, well, what about the, uh, the, the plaza? Uh, uh, you have any ideas for that? The, the plaza at the local level uh, mm -hmm. is being proposed um, Unfortunately, because the investors uh, right now are not really looking for to do anything. Expansion. Uh, no, no expansion or no mm -hmm. additional uh, monies mm -hmm. for renovation. Uh, so in that, in that regard, we are kind of at a standstill. But mm -hmm. on the county side, on the local side, yeah. the blueprint that we would like to see is more of a town center. Mm -hmm. The plaza... Uh, the mall idea. It's one of the oldest uh, malls in Prince George County. It is, and it's, it really is still a very, uh, very busy yes. uh, shopping center. Right. But the plaza uh, out, uh, concept, the mall concept, is actually outdated. Right. What we are now looking for is town centers, mm -hmm. similar to what we have right down the street here at Bowie Town Center, mm -hmm. where you have pedestrian uh, safety where you, in, in mind there's no pedestrian safety when you're doing a mall because it's just a parking lot yeah and you get out of the parking lot and you and go inside yeah. and so what we want people to do is walk uh, walk around go from store to store have different whether it's a, a nice playground area whether it's mm -hmm. a nice uh, um, eating area things that actually bring communities together Mm -hmm. Aside from just going inside a store right. and shopping, and shopping, and yeah. so we want have a community type right, exactly. uh, environment. Yeah. That's what a town center does. Mm -hmm. That's the blueprint for Prince George's Plaza, mm -hmm. uh, or the Mall of Prince George's, which is now called. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're right; it's one of the oldest mall, but that malls. But that's is what uh, we're looking for, God willing, in the next 15 to 20 years, which is mm -hmm. how long it takes for these things to happen. Yes, yes, because uh, uh, really, they really have survived 
economically, where a lot of malls are closed, but that's one of the few that really have survived in Prince it's, George County. It certainly has helped that uh, they've invested wisely in, mm -hmm. in bringing Target, mm -hmm. uh, in bringing, uh, well, Macy's when it finally mm -hmm. overtook Hex, mm -hmm. uh, as well as Marshall's. Mm -hmm. uh, those are some key stores that a lot of people shop. Right. And the fact that they're right across the street from the metro station yeah. uh, has, has that, definitely helped that, tremendously. That, that's a positive thing is the metro station. Absolutely. Hey, I want to thank you for being here. And, and once again, uh, you, you, you're doing a great job and, and, and people reward you, thank you know, you. by putting you back in office. That's, that's what people have to understand. If you do a good job, you know, and people realize it and you've uh, done a Tremendous job in uh, ten years. You're going. You're going to be fourteen years. That I mean, you're really a plus for for that area. I think of all the uh, uh, councilmen there. I think you have had the, the the tough job. You know what I mean. And what about this? Quickly, tell us about this uh, Spanish Heritage. Well, Hispanic Heritage Month is celebrated from September 15th to October 15th, uh, but I don't mind running all the way into November, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. uh, right. But it's basically to celebrate the diversity of the Latino community in this great country. Uh, it is not new. It's something that has been going on since uh, the beginning of the right. country, going back to the Civil War, right. uh, as far as history is concerned, at minimum. Uh, and so it's just a way of uh, explaining to people, you know, we are rich uh, in diversity here mm -hmm. uh, in many different areas uh, being October being Hispanic Her Heritage Month we like to talk about mm -hmm. the different things the foods the the cultures mm -hmm. the music uh, that uh, that make up the the Spanish speaking um, uh, communities mm -hmm. uh, and because the more that we learn about one another the more we realize that we have in common All right uh, and so that's uh, that's the importance of this month and uh, I'm, I'm happy it's my favorite part of the year because mm -hmm. I get to go out that's one of the things we've been doing going out to different schools and talking to students and letting them know that uh, you know we need to learn about one another mm -hmm. uh, that way we get along better well, what about the young people? You got a program that you're working on, anything for young people getting involved? As, as far as young people right now, uh, we have a proposal mm -hmm. uh, currently uh, with the county. Uh, we're working on it. It hasn't been solidified yet, mm -hmm. uh, but it's basically uh, trying to do outreach through the arts. There's a group called Colors that does an amazing job. They're a performing arts uh, program uh, with the school system. They dance, they sing, they hold plays, mm -hmm. they play music instruments, things along those lines. We're trying to see how it is that we can expand that uh, to help uh, different groups, uh, let's say, keep them busy after school. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, yes. right now it's... Uh, That's what I mean. You know, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's currently existing, yeah. but we want to see how it is that we can expand. You want to expand it. Yeah, we want program. to expand it yeah. uh, to, to basically, it, if there's no intramurals, or if there's mm. no uh, after-school activities, to provide mm. uh, education as well mm. as, a, mm. as a musical uh, training right. uh, to students. And that's, you know, it's basically uh, education and fun mm. through the arts. That's hey, what we're trying to work sounds on. Sounds great. It's not solidified yet, but we're working yeah, on that. Well, that, the, those are in the future. That's, it takes time for those things. It, it definitely And like does. I say, when you are on a board or anything like that, uh, it's compromise, you know. Absolutely. Uh, and we all have to work together to make Prince George County uh, one, you know what I mean? Absolutely. For everybody. Definitely. So uh, you're doing a great job. And once again, I'd like to congratulate for you for the time that you spent on the council, which is a lot of people don't realize, you know, it takes a lot of time away from your uh, private life, but meetings and things, of that, and, and you're a young man, you know, so you have a lot of things that you're doing. But I want to thank you for being here. Anytime you have something special, you know, concerning your district, and uh, just let me know, and we'll have more, especially with the young people. I'm, I, 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 you know what I mean, I bring some of them on if uh, some of their programming uh, from that area. I like to have it. Okay, this has been Ed Brown, and we've had Will Campos, our outstanding councilman, running for the House of Delegates. Hey, you got a good man there. You better keep him. See you next time. Thank you.